Hi. So maybe it's just me, maybe I'm just someone who lives completely in an entire city that is under a rock because I had no idea that Avril Lavigne was still so on top of her game and I had no idea that she had put out an album earlier this year. There were a couple of music videos that came out, one in particular was I Fell In Love With The Devil and that dropped and it made me think we were hyping up an album but in turn we were actually making a visual for an album that was already out. Now I actually did a review of that video and you can see that on my channel as well but in that video I kept stating wow this is really good, I'm surprised, I didn't expect this when's the album? And that's when the comment section flooded to let me know, Steven, the album's out, it's been out, but now you should do a video on it. So in today's video, we're gonna be listening and talking about Avril Lavigne's Head Above Water album. And this was actually her first release since 2013. So there was a big gap here in music. She was battling Lyme disease and she went through a divorce and several other things that led us to this moment in her life. So we're gonna check this out. Now the first song on this album is called Head Above Water, it's track one. We did do a review to this video as well on the channel, so make sure to check that out. This is Avril. This is Avril doing pop punk ballads, as I said before. she. Like, even though it's a slower song, you can feel that intensity happening. So I was really excited to hear the song originally just because I think this is a sound that she is so good at popularizing. Now, I've only ever listened to her first album, and even then, I bet it was only a couple tracks. So I thought about going back and kind of doing a couple of videos where we really go and dive into her discography, but I loved hearing the song originally. I think just that intensity that she brings with the heavy guitars in the back is really like the style that she coined. So the next song we're gonna listen to is a song called Birdie. Like a bird up in a cage Dude, this is such a good sound. Okay, so to me that song definitely represents at least my interpretation somewhat of the uh, relationship that she had and sort of her wings were clipped, she wasn't allowed to go and be herself and do her thing and really fly. And that's kind of what I picked up on this. One thing that I really like is the vocal performance here. I think it shows another style of Avril that I haven't heard too much of just because it's always kind of been radio hits for me. But to hear her in some of these vocal ranges is really great. The only thing I don't really care for in the song is the chorus, the fly on birdie fly or whatever. I feel like the song could have been a little bit better with a better chorus. Having said that though, I like the lyrical content of it and I do like to hear Avril in this style. Again, she has such a unique voice so to be able to show it off on a track like this is great. Okay, the next track is called I Fell In Love With The Devil. I love this song. So good. So I still love that song. Um, her delivery and some of those lyrics, the way that she over pronunciates some of the words actually is what I think makes this song so unique. On top of that, the build up going into the chorus and then her letting it all out, that's just the type of song that you're going to feel. Like you're gonna walk away knowing like, damn, I felt that. Now originally I said that I thought that this song had something to do with her previous relationship with the dude from Nickelback. Um, some, a couple people in the comment section let me know that that really wasn't the case. It is most likely about uh, a relationship she had after that. But at the same time, the music video doesn't really conclude any of those things because she's like driving herself to her own funeral. So I'm not entirely sure what the song is about. However, I have been jamming it almost daily since I listened to the music video on this channel. So I like that one. The next song is called Tell Me It's Over. So I'm not gonna lie, at the start of that song, I wasn't really sure where she was gonna go with it in that initial verse. It just kind of, it was a little slow, it was a little bit different of a style than I've ever heard from her. Granted, there's a lot that I haven't heard from her, so it's kind of hard to judge that. But at first I was like, okay, this is kind of chill. Um, but when she got to the chorus and she started belting those notes out, I was like, perfect. The song essentially is talking about, again, putting herself in a relationship, I believe, where she's with somebody that she's fighting and, and you know, they're always leaving, and, but yet they come right back together 
and you know it doesn't feel like it's over when you come over it doesn't feel like it's over when you when you close the door saying like hey we're talking about breaking up or we're fighting or whatever you're gonna leave you're just gonna come back and this is kind of her ballad screaming like hey just tell me that it's over like that we're done and, and we're not playing this game where you keep coming back that's at least what i got from it and it helps that avril so much emotion in the vocals when she's singing here you can actually feel that pain in her voice and that confusion and i like that especially with avril and her unique style so like i said the verse initially i was a little bit eh, what's gonna happen here but she really crushed it with the chorus i actually feel like the verse had purpose building up for that type of chorus so that was great okay the next song well, this is gonna be interesting Dumb Blonde featuring Nicki Minaj. Oh shit. You hate to say it. I don't like this song. I don't think this song is very good. Um, I don't think Avril needs to try to make this song. Uh, yeah, I have mixed feelings on this one because I don't think that she needs to make this song. It had a very Gwen Stefani, this shit is bananas, B-A-N-A-N-A-S type of vibe to it, uh, Holla Bat Girl. And I don't think that Avril Lavigne needs a song like this to try to carry herself or her brand. Usually her lyrics and her delivery are there. I don't think this song really does it for me. Um, I was expecting to not like the feature from Nicki Minaj though because I didn't know how the two would really twist. And while I don't think Avril's part was my favorite, uh, Nicki Minaj actually did a really great job at the end of this. Sometimes with features it can feel so forced, but in this one there were a couple ad-libs from Nicki and then the last verse was actually really good and one of the better Nicki Minaj verses that I've heard in a while. And over the like, doom, 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 like that little beat back there, but she wrote it so well. So that's definitely the one saving grace for this one. But you know what, if she had a lot of fun making the song and it meant a lot to her, then that's awesome. And I'm stoked for her. And maybe it's just not for me. I, I particularly don't like it. Some of you, this might be your anthem. So no shame on that. Just for me, this really wasn't it. Not what I was really expecting. And I'm okay with that usually, but okay. The next song is called, It Was In Me. Yes. Okay, well, we just got... Uh, first off, how do you follow up Dumb Blonde with a song this good? Like, this is Avril's best vocal performance so far on the song. The falsetto she sings in, the voice cracks at the end, like, come on. This is what I was expecting from a lot of the album based on Head Above Water and I Fell In Love With The Devil. This does not disappoint. This song right here does not disappoint. The lyrical content is great. It sounds like she was talking about trying, like, I don't know if she's talking about faith or if she's talking about happiness or something like that along those lines. It's hard when you listen to a song for the first time trying to pick up everything on it. But talking about, you know, she wasn't able to find it when she was driving around in a Maserati and wasn't able to find it traveling the world because it was always in her. She says, let me feel high when I'm sober. Like, I relate to that so much as someone who's always been sober. I just feel like this is the type of passion that I wanted on the album. And this was great. Like, it was in me is great. It's definitely, I didn't expect anything other than I fell in love with the devil to be my favorite track on this. But so far, I just put a little heart next to that one because that is definitely the banger on this album so far. All right, up next, we have the song called Souvenir. So this track is more of a love song, love ballad, but a cute way where she's talking about, you know, I want you to be my souvenir, uh, use your shirt to dry my tears. Those are my favorite lyrics anyways of the song. And it's pretty catchy. Uh, the verse is pretty good. It kind of keeps you listening. And then the chorus, when she says souvenir, it just kind of like wrapped me in. It's one of those songs that I don't know if I would really like listen to very often, unless I'm listening to the entire album. I wouldn't single this song out, but it's good for what it is. The next song we're gonna listen to is a song called Crush. Oh. We got another love track right after Souvenir. We get Crush. And my favorite part of this song is hearing her sing 
over the instrumental in this. The instrumental has more of like a, it's, it's a little bit slowed down, but it's got a heavy bass to it. And the way she's singing on it is really great. One thing I don't like is that the lyrics are extremely generic. Now, having said that, she's getting her point across very well, and we have another love song, but I just feel like the writing was very generic in this song, but she sounded great vocally, and that's sort of the trade-off here. You got a really great instrumental, you have Avril's vocal delivery, you can't get the holy trinity of all three. You're not gonna get perfect lyrics here. And um, despite the generic lyrics, I feel like this is a bop. Like, it's hard to not just like bang your head and listen to this one. Okay, the next song is called Goddess. Okay, another love song. I think we're kind of picking up a theme here of where Avril is at in her life. Singing about a current relationship or a current partner that she's with, talking about just how great she he puts her on this pedestal, everything about her is great. And I like that it's over an acoustic beat. It kind of makes me reminiscent of like early days Avril Lavigne where she's just being very honest and very open. Uh, one thing that I did not like about this track was that she said bananas. I was like, I was listening to the lyrics. I was like, okay, this is good. This is good. And then I heard bananas and I was like, come on. Are you trolling me? Is this, am I being trolled here? Because otherwise this song is perfect. This song is everything I would want in an Avril song. An acoustic guitar, Avril's beautiful voice, good songwriting, except for bananas. But you can't like everything. That's the way it goes. However, this might be your ringtone and I'm not judging you. Okay, the next track is called Bigger Wow. Banananas. Everything about this song screams generic pop sound, and I don't mean that in a negative way. I am curious as to why they didn't focus on marketing this as the single. I actually feel because of the lyrics, because of the delivery, because of the beat, the snaps, the weird sound effects in the back, this could have been on the radio. This could have been a radio hit for Avril, which would have been really big because if you're like me, you're stuck in the past of thinking of what her first album sounds like. And then I hear this and sometimes I'm like, huh, this is different. I don't judge an artist based on that. That's fine if you know she's experimenting and I understand some of her other albums were pop oriented, but this sounds like modern pop. Like I'm surprised this didn't get picked up in more places. I also wasn't even expecting to hear a song like this on this album. This is the first one that made me go, wow, radio. I feel like we've seen a couple of different styles on this. We've heard sort of the like ballad style, the rock ballad. We've heard an acoustic song. We had her try it hip hop, which really wasn't my favorite. A couple love songs and now this modern pop song. And I'm I'm just, a, I'm a little shocked that they didn't try to market this one as the one with the music video, the one all over the radio, the one on all the streaming platforms as a single on all these playlists. Like I feel like a lot of people would have picked this up and probably thought that it wasn't even her. They would have assumed it to be one of these artists that are constantly played on the radio. So that's just my take on that. All right, the next song is called Love Me Insane. Another song that really shows her diversity, but shows just how beautiful her voice still is. Some of these runs that she was getting that when she was saying insane, I'm not gonna do it because I do not sing. But those runs that she was doing, like it's really incredible to hear her do that. This is another love song. And I will say that I am very happy for Avril to be you know, doing better with this Lyme disease, to be out of relationships that weren't working for her and in a new one. I think that all of those things are so great for her and it's really showing on this album. Like, she's really being honest in herself. There are a couple tracks, like Head Above Water and I Fell In Love With The Devil, in my opinion, they were the singles. I don't know that they even fit on this album. They don't really tell the, the story of the album. Those two tracks are so powerful and they definitely showcase a different style of this album. Now I'm not mad about it because those two tracks are amazing. It Was In Me, in my opinion, is my favorite song on this album. Surprisingly, I thought it was gonna be I Fell In Love With The Devil. Um, and I actually liked it like Souvenir Crush, Goddess, and Bigger Wow, and Love Me Insane. We have five love songs in a row. And honestly, now that I'm looking at it, I wonder if like the first few tracks up to Dumb Blonde was like sort of like the buildup or like her kind of explaining everything that she's been going through. And then It Was In Me, 
was kind of like the last tipping point and now everything else is like where she's at now. That's what I'm viewing with this. It's the only way that this really makes sense to me. Okay, the last track is called Warrior. It's my battles cause I know I'm gonna win the war. I'm a saddle cause I get it on my strength for more. I fight for my life like a soldier. Uh, great way to end the album. Again, we know that Avril Lavigne has taken sort of a break with music because she was dealing with uh, Lyme disease and sort of all kinds of other stuff going on in her life. And she touched on it a little bit, Head Above Water, but for her to finish this, this album with Warrior is really great because I do feel now looking at the track list that we sort of got a story. Again, the first five or six tracks was her really like building up everything she's been going through. The last couple tracks are all about love and the relationship that she is in, at least that's my interpretation. And then the last song we get, Warrior, which is like closing out, like, hey, I'm going through all this stuff, but I am a warrior, I'm going to battle, I'm going to fight through the night. I like that. I like the fact that we get sort of an ending to the story, but the story still goes on. Like, she's still fighting, she's still not giving up. And I think that brings new meaning to the entire album for me. So now when I listen to it again, I'm like, oh, okay, like this is cool. So I always like when an artist ends with a song that's very powerful like that and not just on a dud. And I'm glad she did that because at the end of the day, despite all the things going on in, in this, which feels like a story or part of her life, we have Warrior, which lets us know, hey, but I'm still fighting. So how do I feel about this album? It was not what I was expecting. I went into it, I always go into every project with an open mind. I was not expecting this. Judging it based off the two singles that I had heard previously, the sound that I thought I was going to hear and what I heard were two very different things. Now having said that, hearing Avril do many different styles on one album is really great, especially for someone like me who was a fan at a very young age. She was a very young age and her music was very young. And it's sort of that pop punk popularized music that I sort of like, grasped onto and I thought it was so cool. So hearing Head Above Water, I fell in love with the devil, that's what I expected to hear. Hearing her rap or like have a rap style song wasn't my favorite. I don't think it was very good. I think she's significantly better than that. And I would love to hear her do hip hop if she was a hip hop artist or if she was more talented in that area. I just feel like that dumb blonde song does not fit on this album at all, especially with the serious nature of the majority of these songs. I know it's okay to have a fun track every once in a while, but at least if the fun track is fun, let it be good. Hearing her over acoustic, hearing her in some ballad styles, hearing her over some rock, hearing her in Warrior, like those moments were the moments that really shined for this album for me. So what I like about this is that it's opened my eyes up to more of her as an artist instead of this one box that I thought she was in. And it makes me want to check out even more of her music, more of her albums, more music videos, whatever. Let me know in the comment section if that's something that you would like to see. But I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, don't forget to drop a like. Comment down below and let me know your thoughts on this video. Don't forget to drop the hashtag skaterboy. And make sure to check the description for all the links to all kinds of cool stuff. You can also join me on Patreon if you'd like. That link is in the description as well. Thank you so much for hanging out, having a good time. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.